This video has been sponsored by Squarespace. Laughing gas is chemically known as nitrous oxide with the formula N2O. When small amounts are inhaled, it produces euphoric and dissociative effects which can sometimes lead to hysteria or uncontrolled laughing. Some people really like this feeling, so it's often used recreationally. At higher doses and when inhaled continuously, it acts as an anesthetic and is commonly used in dentistry and for minor surgeries. However, it also has a whole bunch of non-drug related uses. It's a good oxidizer and it's often used in rocket propellants and cars to increase the power output of the engine. Another major use is as an aerosol propellant, most notably in cans of whipped cream. Nitrous gas is very soluble in fatty compounds, and under the high pressure in the can, quite a large amount is dissolved into the cream. When the can is opened, the cream is pushed out, but it's no longer pressurized. This causes the solubility of the nitrous to decrease, and the excess gas escapes from the cream, causing it to puff up. This effect is very similar to releasing the pressure in a soda bottle and having it bubble over. The specific reason why nitrous is used for this is because it works well and there aren't many other alternatives. Air and especially oxygen can't be used because the cream would quickly become rancid. Carbon dioxide is acidic in water so it would curdle the cream and nitrogen's just not soluble enough to work. Anyway, my goal for this video is to make some nitrous gas and then use it in the barking dog demonstration which gets its name from the cool sound that it makes. These are just a couple quick examples that I got from around YouTube. <coughs> to make the nitrous, there are a few ways. The major industrial way is to heat the fertilizer ammonium nitrate, which decomposes into water and the nitrous oxide. The problem with this method though, is that it can be dangerous. As it breaks down, it generates its own heat, which can in turn cause more to decompose in a positive feedback cycle. For this reaction to be done safely, the temperature has to be carefully controlled, otherwise it tends to go crazy. This can overwhelm the system that it's contained in, which can build up pressure and sometimes lead to an explosion. Ammonium nitrate is the cause of some really bad industrial explosions, and these are just a couple examples. To be fair, these are completely uncontrolled disasters happening on a massive scale, but still. I'm pretty sure I'd be fine doing it, but considering there's a much safer and easier method, I decided to go with that one. This other method involves reacting sodium nitrite with hydroxylamine hydrochloride, which would cleanly make nitrous oxide and only sodium chloride and water as side products. It's also really easy to control, so there's almost no risk or danger involved. On top of this, both of the chemicals are easily available online and are often easier to get than ammonium nitrate. As a side note, this preparation is just for fun and to explore the science. If all you're looking for is to get your hands on some, it's much easier and cheaper to just directly buy it. Anyway, to get things started, I add 30 grams of hydroxylamine hydrochloride, followed by 45 milliliters of water. Then, I turn on the magnetic stirring and wait for it all to dissolve. The dissolution of hydroxylamine hydrochloride is quite endothermic and the solution cools down a lot. This can really slow down the process though, so it's a good idea to turn on the hot plate. When everything disappears, I take it away and I move on to making the sodium nitrite solution. Oddly enough, this procedure is almost identical. 
I use the same mass of sodium nitrite, the same volume of water, and the dissolution is also endothermic. When it all disappears, I'm ready to set up the actual reaction. The hydroxylamine solution is added to a three-necked flask, and then I put together the rest of the apparatus. At first, it might look complicated, but it's actually quite simple. The addition funnel in the middle is filled with the sodium nitrate solution, so that when I open it, it will drip into the hydroxylamine. They'll react together to form nitrous oxide, water, and salt, but it'll also produce a decent amount of heat. The nitrous oxide will be pushed out of the flask, through the tube in the back, and it'll make it to the valve. Right now, it's just open to the air, but I'll soon be attaching a balloon there. Because of the heat that's generated here, I need to cool things, otherwise a lot of water vapor would come over with the nitrous. Alternatively, it's also possible to just set up a gas bubbler that's filled with water. Because I'm going to be building up some pressure in this thing, all the joints need to be sealed with grease to make them airtight, and held together with clips. Anyway, when it's all nice and cold, I start to add the sodium nitrite, and immediately you can see a whole bunch of bubbling occurring, which is the nitrous oxide being produced. Before adding a balloon though, I need to generate more nitrous to completely flush out the system and remove any air. When I feel I've added enough, I go ahead and attach the balloon. Then I adjust the funnel so that it adds at a decent drop rate, and I wait for the balloon to be filled. In terms of the reaction, one important thing here is that the nitrite is added to the hydroxylamine and not the other way around. This way, the nitrate is continuously consumed and it's never allowed to build up. If the concentration were to ever get too high, like if I added things the other way around, I might start to make some higher toxic nitrogen oxides, like nitrogen dioxide. When it gets to a decent size, I take it off, temporarily seal it, and add a fresh balloon. Then, I just continue the addition of the nitrite until it runs out. When this one is done, I just close the valve to seal it, and I take off a stopper to make sure that no pressure builds up. The rest of the apparatus is dismantled, and this is my final result. To get an idea as to what the yield of this reaction is, I just measure the diameter of each balloon and calculate their volumes. From this, I do a little bit of math, and I get that the approximate yield was 8.2 liters of nitrous oxide, which is a percent yield of about 80%. Now, to see if I even have nitrous oxide, I'll just do a quick burning splint test. The first one is just a control, and nothing's been added to the beaker, so it's just a regular burning piece of wood. In the next run, I open the valve slightly to continuously flush the beaker with nitrous. This time when I add the splint, we can see that it burns a lot better. This happens because the heat of the flame breaks down the nitrous oxide to nitrogen and oxygen gas. The extra oxygen is then picked up by the burning splint. Anyway, now that I've more or less confirmed that I have nitrous oxide, I can move on to trying out the barking dog demo. To do it, I only need one other chemical called carbon disulfide, which is a highly toxic and smelly solvent. I was luckily able to buy it locally from a friend, but unfortunately, it's generally hard to get a hold of. Anyway, to set it up, I just feed the tube from one of the balloons to the bottom of a grad cylinder, then I open the valve and fill it up. Nitrous is a lot denser than air, so putting something loosely over the top is enough to keep it inside. I then add a small amount of carbon disulfide, and I wait for it to evaporate and fill up the cylinder. After a few minutes, I turn off the lights, and I try to light it. The match burned a lot better at the top because there was nitrous there, but not much else happened because the carbon disulfide didn't diffuse far enough. When the match is lowered, it eventually hits the solvent vapor, and the reaction takes off. What this tells me is something that I kind of already knew, which is that passive evaporation isn't going to work, and I'll need to help it a little. When I turn the lights back on, you can see that the grad cylinder is dirty, and it's because sulfur has formed on the walls. I couldn't find an amazing reference, but it seems like this is the overall reaction. 
The nitrous oxide reacts with the carbon disulfide to form carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, elemental sulfur, and nitrogen. It of course also produces a lot of light as well as heat. Anyway, I went ahead and tried it again, but this time I used more carbon disulfide and I shook it around to get it to evaporate. I added about a milliliter, but the slow speed of the reaction tells me that it's probably still not enough. I did it one more time just to make sure, and I got the same result. I also tried it with some water at the bottom, which can help mix around the small volume of carbon disulfide. For the last runs, I did it with about twice the amount of carbon disulfide to see if it would make a difference. What I find interesting is that the sound it makes each time is quite different. Another interesting thing is that the reaction oscillates, which you can sometimes see when you slow things down. You don't really see it with my footage though, and I think it's more obvious when a longer tube is used. The YouTube channel Periodic Videos goes over this effect in much more detail, and I suggest checking out their video. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, I think that's about it. In the future, I might dedicate a video to this demonstration, where I go into a lot more detail. I'm already working on a lot of projects though, so unfortunately, I can't make any promises as to when it will actually happen. A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring another one of my videos. If you want to make your own website and support my channel at the same time, you can sign up for your free trial using my special link, squarespace.com slash nilred. This link will also give you 10% off your first purchase. In the previous Squarespace sponsored video, I completely revamped my website by giving it a new look and a couple new pages. What I'm going to be doing this time though, is showing you guys how easy Squarespace makes it to manage an online shop. For a long time, the only merch on my website were beakers and keychains, but last week I received a whole bunch of new glassware. I now have a nice variety of products, all of which will have to be added to the shop. Luckily for me, this is actually pretty easy to do. Squarespace is all very intuitive, so it doesn't need any coding, scripting, or anything like that. Just as an example, I'll be adding one of my products, which is the beaker with a handle. To do this, I start by making a new blank page for the product, and then I link a photo to it. To test it out, I click on the photo, and it works, but the page is still blank. To add my item here, I need to make a new product page. I quickly name it, and when I hit enter, another window pops up. I hit the plus sign, specify the product type, and then I fill in all of the details. Now I head back to the blank page, and I choose the option to add a product. I tinker with a few of the settings, and then I add it. The image here is a little bit too big for my liking, so to shrink it down, I add some spacers to each side. I also throw in a title and a small description to the top of the page. At this point, I'm pretty much done, but at the last second, I wanted to add another photo to show that it can be used for other things like tea or coffee. Now I just need to add the rest of my glassware, which will use pretty much the same process. So fast forward about 30 minutes later, and all the products are online, and the shop is good to go. If any of you are interested in checking it out or picking up some merch, there's a link in the description. Anyway, with that being said, if you're looking to make a website, I honestly recommend Squarespace. As I mentioned earlier, they're offering all my viewers a free trial and 10% off their first purchase. If you want to support my channel, you should definitely sign up and give it a try using my personalized link, which again is squarespace.com slash nilred. As usual, a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone who supports me can see my videos at least 24 hours before I post it to YouTube, and they can also directly message me. All supporters with $5 or more will get their name at the end of the video like you see here.